Hi everybody, this is C.A. Balakrishna from lecturepedia.in. Now in this class we will be revising SS705, modification of audit opinion. Okay. Now in SS700, we have seen what would be the form or, uh, format of audit report if auditor gives unmodified opinion. Here we will be seeing what will be the format if the auditor gives modified opinion. Okay. Basically, here we will be uh, discussing the types of modified opinions and what are the situations in which modified opinion will be given by the auditor. Okay. If you are done with this, uh, this standard gets completed. Now, first of all, as you all know, opinions will be majorly of two types, unmodified, modified. Unmodified will not be discussing here, coming to modified. In modified opinions, there will be three types of opinion. One is qualified opinion, adverse opinion and a disclaimer of opinion. Now, in which situations auditor will give these three types of opinions that will be seen. Before going into uh, the situations in which the auditor gives these uh, you know types of opinion, we will understand one concept known as pervasiveness. What is meant by pervasiveness? Okay. Now, let us say for example, in the financial statements, there is only one item that is misstated okay or there are two items that are misstated then that will not be pervasive okay because there are only minor misstatements and only one or two items affected that is on one hand on the other hand there are many misstatements okay cash is affected debtors are misstated sales are misstated assets are misstated Entirely auditor is finding a lot of misstatements in the financial statements. This will be pervasive because various accounts are affected. Okay. There are misstatements in various accounts. This will be pervasive uh, effect. Hope this is clear. This is the difference between pervasiveness, not, not pervasiveness. Now, the auditor's opinion, this uh, qualified adverse disclaimer will be based on pervasiveness of the misstatement. Hope this is clear. Now, this is meant by pervasiveness. Now, first of all, another thing is misstatements. Misstatements could be of material and immaterial. Now, if there are immaterial misstatements, auditor is not concerned about them. Auditor is concerned only about material misstatements. Keep this in mind. Okay. Thereby, only when there are material misstatements, auditor will give this modified opinion. Hope this is clear. Now, we will see what are the situations in which qualified adverse and disclaimer opinion will be given. Firstly, auditor is conducting the audit. During the audit, he found misstatements and these misstatements are material misstatements. Then, he will check whether these material misstatements are pervasive or not. Okay. Now, he feels that these are material misstatements but not pervasive okay yes these are material misstatements but these are not pervasive okay uh, these are not affecting entire financial statements okay there is only one or two items that are misstated apart from those one or two items everything is okay okay thereby these are not pervasive in that case auditor will give qualified opinion hope this is clear whenever the material misstatements are not pervasive auditor will give qualified opinion okay it is secondary whether auditor is able to obtain audit evidence or not able to obtain audit evidence okay once the misstatements are not pervasive even though auditor is able to obtain audit evidence or not able to obtain audit evidence auditor will give qualified opinion hope this is clear now coming to the second case auditor found material misstatements but here these material misstatements are pervasive. Once the misstatements are pervasive, then the auditor cannot give qualified opinion. Okay. Here the matter is becoming somewhat serious. The material misstatements are pervasive. Then he has to give adverse opinion or disclaimer of the opinion. From these two, he has to select. How he will select? Let's see. Misstatements are material and they are pervasive. Then he will check whether he is able to obtain audit evidence regarding those misstatements okay 
auditor says that yes i am able to obtain sufficient audit sufficient and appropriate audit evidence that these material misstatements are pervasive i am having audit evidence then you give adverse opinion okay you are having audit evidence that these misstatements are pervasive and these misstatements exist thereby since you are having the audit evidence you can happily give negative that is give adverse opinion hope this is clear and the second situation auditor is not able to obtain audit evidence okay misstatements are material they are pervasive but not auditor not able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence okay if auditor is not able to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence and the auditor feels that the misstatements could be material and also pervasive in that case auditor will disclaim the opinion see if he is not able to obtain audit evidence then on which basis he will give the opinion thereby he will not give the opinion that is he will disclaim the opinion okay disclaimer of opinion means not giving any opinion why not giving any opinion means auditor is not able to obtain any audit evidence hope this is clear here you will get a doubt sir in the first case also in the qualified opinion portion also you said that uh, once uh misstatements are not pervasive you give qualified opinion whether auditor is able to obtain audit evidence or not able to obtain audit evidence here in the first situation even though auditor is not able to obtain audit evidence but since the misstatements are not pervasive okay since the misstatements are not pervasive there are only one or two misstatements why to disclaim the opinion okay let me give qualified opinion even though i am not having uh, audit evidence okay thereby in that case even though auditor is not having audit evidence since the misstatements are not pervasive auditor will give qualified opinion but here auditor is not able to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence and the misstatements if if at all there could be having pervasive effect thereby auditor will disclaim the opinion hope this is clear okay this is how you need to check uh whether to give qualified adverse or disclaimer of opinion hope this is clear oh, once i'll just summarize uh, summarize it to you first of all in order to give uh, first of all the audit, audit uh, basically you remember this in the form of three points firstly check whether misstatements are material or not secondly check whether they are having pervasive effect or not thirdly check whether is uh, auditor is able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence or not now firstly checking whether misstatements are material or not if they are immaterial then why to modify the opinion auditor is concerned only with material misstatement thereby if misstatements are immaterial then give unmodified opinion if misstatements are material then yes come to modified opinion next step in this modified opinion of this which one to give check whether these material misstatements are pervasive or not now if material misstatements are not pervasive then close your eyes and give qualified opinion because material misstatements are not pervasive in case they are pervasive check whether auditor is able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence or not if auditor is able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence then give adverse opinion if auditor is not able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence then disclaim the opinion hope this is clear this is how you need to check now now once we'll go through this yeah ss705 modification of opinion in the independent auditor's report types of modified opinion qualified opinion adverse opinion disclaimer of opinion qualified opinion when we'll give material misstatements but not pervasive okay whether the auditor is able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit, audit evidence or not able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence next comes adverse opinion this material misstatements are pervasive and sufficient appropriate audit evidence is obtained then you will give adverse opinion next disclaimer of opinion material misstatements and they are pervasive but the sufficient appropriate audit evidence is not obtained in that case disclaim the opinion now how these uh, paragraphs will look basically in the opinion paragraph in case of unmodified opinion what will be the name of the paragraph auditor's opinion but here the name of the paragraph should be 
qualified opinion you should include this term qualified if you are giving qualified opinion and you should include this term at adverse in the name of paragraph if you are giving adverse opinion in the same way disclaimer hope this is clear now how this paragraph will look like in case of qualified opinion except for the effects of matters described in basis for qualified opinion financial statements give true and fair view okay Ex except for some matters that we have specified in our basis for modified opinion okay basis for qualified opinion except for those matters for entire matters the financial statements are giving true and fair you as per applicable financial reporting framework okay next coming to adverse opinion in the auditor's opinion because of the significance of matter described in the basis for adverse opinion select uh, uh, adverse opinion section financial statements do not present true and fair you okay this entire financial statements do not present a true and fair you why the reason we have given in the basis for uh, adverse opinion because of that reasons financial statements do not present true and fair you okay next disclaimer of opinion you need to state that we are not giving any opinion on these financial statements here we are not able to obtain sufficient appropriate audio evidence and in case there are any misstatements those misstatements will be having a pervasive effect thereby we are not giving any effect okay that has to be uh, not giving any opinion that has to be stated state that auditor does not express opinion hope this is clear next there is uh, another aspect now what if management puts a limitation on your scope okay after accepting the audit you are conducting the audit then management comes man uh, auditor you should not attend physical verification you should not check the fixed assets you should not check the cash like this management is implementing some limitations on the auditor then what the auditor has to do see limitation of scope by management after acceptance of engagement auditor concludes possible effects of undetected misstatements could be material but not pervasive okay auditor feels that okay management is not allowing me to do this thing this thing this thing if at all there are any misstatements in those items uh, those misstatements will be material but not pervasive okay in that case i will give qualify opinion in case i feel that the material uh, the misstatements that could be present in those items could be pervasive okay could be pervasive in that case whether withdrawal is possible i will check okay management is not allowing me to uh, check those items and if at all there are any misstatements in those items those misstatements would be pervasive then i will check whether i can withdraw from this engagement the answer is yes if i can withdraw from the uh, from this engagement yes i will withdraw if uh, withdrawal is not possible in that case a disclaimer the opinion hope this is clear by this sa uh, sa705 has been completed uh, uh and in the next class we will be revising essay 706 hope this is clear and if you want to purchase a uh, classes you can visit our website lecturepedia.in and you can purchase the uh, classes okay take care bye bye